we have to acknowledge this because we don't want this to go with people's heads. So, okay. 2012, which was seven years ago, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> you borrowed 30000 Yes. Right? To do your second investment property. And then from there, you kind of just learned the ropes and you were at where you're at now. So, in the words of Kendrick Lamar, <laughs> right? he, he took 30000 and he freaked it. To twenty five million, yes. seven years. Seven yeah, years. yeah. It, it's um. I'll say twenty sixteen though. That's that's kind of like where the magic happened though. Okay. It, it, it's kind of like it's, that's when like I was consistently able to purchase a property, fix it up, rent it out, and then once it's already rented, go to a, a lender to cash it out. All right. So can yeah, we? All right. So, so, so can we? Like, so can we get? Like, so, if so, you look at the chart, though, like, uh-huh. you see, like, you notice how it's kind of like goes, like, oh, it's like you know, getting a three, it's like one, one, and yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. But it's like 2016. That's kind of like when it really like made numbers. All right, all right. So, so actually, 2015. My bad. 2015. So can we that's, go? To, that's when I, you know, can, like the first cash out. Can we go to 2015 when when you start to really take off and and kind of just because that's like your blueprint, right? As far as um, yeah. Can you just break that down as far as the, the flips? How you look at a home, right? I. Can you just tell exactly like what you do? So what I do is like when I look at a house, it's like try not to look at a house. I try to look at numbers. Mm. So it's in the formula is basically uh, I, I keep chart of like of my portfolio and I ask myself like, all right, is this going to increase my net worth? And then the other question is, is this going to increase my cash flow? And if the answer is yes, then it's kind of like, all right, it's a thumbs up, you know, I could get this. But now there's the other question now is like, how fast and can I get my money back on this deal? Mm. And then there's like, if all three are yes, then that's when I jump on the deal. Okay, yeah, this is a deal for me. So it, it's like every every property that I see, I see it with that intention. It's like, uh, I think like the most important thing you need to know is how much can a house appraise for? And then it's like the key component here is appraise for, mm. which took me a while to understand because before I would look at a house and I was just like such an honest guy and I would look at it and I would tell myself like, oh, you know what? I could sell that for 250. Mm-hmm. So it's worth 250. But um, going back now to like the inner city, and it was like kind of like why I stuck to Patterson, because I felt like I knew Patterson like the palm of my hand. And um, not sure if it's like, if it's, you know, if it, if it is the same for every inner city, but let's say Patterson, you get a, you get a block. Mm-hmm. This corner right here is like where all the hustlers are at, and it's a lot of crime basically, right? Mm-hmm. But this corner right here, which is the same block, super quiet. It's cool. You could, you know, you could walk by. Nobody's gonna, you know, try to hustle you for, you know, to buy any any drugs or anything like that. Yeah. But now they're on the same exact block. So now you picture somebody coming from out of town, like an appraiser or anyone, and now they see this property over here. But now when they look at comparables, they're looking at the whole neighborhood and going for the median area. So it's like, if this property right, you know, uh, right here, basically, um, let's say this one is sells for two hundred, but you know, let's say this one sells for. Uh, for, for 250, let's just say, right? But now, if you're buying this one and you're buying it through a, a short sale, it's gonna be a foreclosure, more than likely, they're gonna use this one here as a comparable. So now this brings down the value of this, but this one is worth more, and you know it's worth more yeah. because you know the area better. So, um, and then going back to the other thing about knowing about, uh, you know, appraisal and values, it, it, it's, um, it, you know, that, that's kind of where it's at, because it's like, you know that this one's gonna sell for less and this one's gonna sell for more, but when you put those two on paper, Depending which way it goes, remember as I told you earlier, yeah. is like appraisal is not a science, is an art. So depending on the artist, depending which way they want to go, that value could come in at two hundred, could come in at two fifty. So I try to look for the house that's worth two fifty that I know the value is going to come in at two hundred. So it's kind of like now off the bat, as soon as I buy the property, I already know I have fifty thousand in equity. The other part of it too, which is why I always try to look for properties that need renovation, because uh, most people do not want to deal with renovations. Most people want to just grab the keys, go inside the house, and they're good to go. So when you get a property and you're renovating, you're adding value to it. Mm-hmm. So now, um, let's just say the scenario, right? You, you ended up picking this house for $200, um, but you know it's already off the bat. It's already worth $250. But now, you, you, let's say you throw $25 into it. Now it's not $275. Now it's $300. So now you, you added more, more, more value to it. So when, when you're doing that, right? When you're about to renovate, right? I'm assuming on your first property, you didn't have a team. Or did you? going into no. it right so what was the process of selecting a team of contractors like on, like honest people yeah, honest, yeah. right so that you don't get ripped off or was it like you know what i'm gonna learn the craft and do it myself or what was the process in, in creating that well first properties um 
And let's just say the second property that I purchased, right? That one, I did not do a government renovation. I just went in, threw a couple, you know, some laminate floorings, painted the walls, patched up a few holes. Um, I think I did like one bathroom. Had I purchased the house today, that probably would have been a complete gut renovation. So you have to do what, you know, what you can handle, what you know. Mm -hmm. um, so when you start off, uh, you know, I advise everybody, just start off, you know, with light renovations and kind of like work your way up. Uh, the way it works is basically you get yourself, you know, that one handy guy, which once again, this is why it works out. If, you, if you're able to buy in your neighborhood, you can make a few phone calls. Hey, do you know, sir? Like, oh yeah, my cousin has a cousin who mm -hmm. is pretty handy. He can help you out. So you start off with the handy guy. Um, but after a while, you know, when you start doing more intense renovations, you know, they might refer you to someone else. Or it's like, you know, just go to Home Depot. It's like, and you study, like, Home Depot's where I buy most of my materials. And it's like, and if you go in there, you study, when you see somebody walking out and all they have is just electrical materials, like, you know, this guy is very likely is an electrician or mm -hmm. at least knows how to do electrical work. Same thing with a plumber and so forth. So it's kind of like, and you sort of build up your team, but it's really a trial and error. Unless you get some referrals, you're going to get burned. You know, a lot of people ask me a lot of times, it's like, have I ever lost money in real estate? And the answer is no, just because I've been able to buy properties that have a lot of um, equity in them. But that doesn't mean that it's not lose money on the deal. So it's like, if I go in and I get a, get a property, I'm projecting to make, let's say, 50000 then I get this one contract there, and, you know, he messes up and I end up losing 10000 one time. Still make 40000 mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't really didn't like lose money but you know You're still in the green yeah yeah, yeah. It's still in the green you know contractors it's, it's tricky with contractors it's like it's like, that's why i call them contractors because if you're not careful they will count you um the what i do now to minimize the chances of uh, somebody uh ripping me off uh, is basically i pay for all the materials which is pretty cool too because it's like you start getting your miles so i pay for the materials i make a, a what i call a draw schedule which is the same kind of schedule you have to give your hard money lender. When you get a loan from a lender, you can't just tell the lender, oh, I need 50000 for a renovation. You got to kind of like map it out. Like, all right, I'm going to need 2000 to get the house. I'm going to need uh, this much for this. And you kind of like do every step of, 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 you know, what's required. You map it out. When this is already mapped out, then, you know, you, you start pulling like the, the, the money out. All right. So, okay. So whole versus flips, because you, you hear there's two kinds of, trains of thoughts in real estate, right? Some people only want to flip. Some people only believe in buying and holding. Some people do both. You're more on the buying and holding side, right? Yeah, more uh, buying and holding. It's um, it's it's a little more complicated because it's like when you buy and flip, it's pretty straight, straightforward. You buy a house, you renovate it, you fix it, and you sell it, you make a profit. Um, when trying to hold it, you know, it goes back to the whole thing of appraisal. What if it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come through and, and the appraisal doesn't come in, right? So, you know, you kind of got to like really, you know, maneuver your way around that but um but it, it's uh if you buy a house that has and you, again you follow like that formula make sure you follow the cash flow um it, it's um thing about real estate too is all numbers so you kind of have all the numbers in front of you basically you already know how much money you're going to collect in rent you already know um how much you're paying for the property over time once you already know this you already know what you're going to spend in renovation so you kind of already know what the mortgage is going to be what the rent is going to be what the profit is going to be um and uh, so when you see it's a really good profit, you keep it and, you know, you don't want to let it go. You want to keep it. So how do you learn that? Like to say, OK, um, all right, I understand that you want to buy a home for cheap and fix it up. But the average person, they don't have any knowledge of like, OK, how much this is actually going to cost to renovate or how do I know it's a good deal? Like, you know, what I mean, like if you're just going in with no team, just by yourself, how do you. So very likely you're going to be a first time home buyer. So I recommend either go for a three family or four family. And, uh, and light renovation, so it's like, you know, painting the walls, you know, maybe throw some lemon in flooring. Make sure you know how much rent is coming in on this property. And then also see how much you're paying for it and know what your mortgage is going to be. So the difference, that's going to be your cash flow. As far as like, what is the number? It, it's kind of like, for me personally, like for, for any property that I get, 1500 is kind of like my number. 1500 in rent? The difference between the mortgage and the rent. So let's okay. say if the mortgage is uh, two thousand. I need to be collecting thirty five. Okay. okay. So the way I do that is basically five hundred goes aside, and that's for your vacancies, your repairs, the things that can happen in the house, and then the other thousand is kind of like your profit. Okay. That's the minimum that you want. That's yeah. Rule of thumb for me, for my area, that's kind of like you know, if, if those are the numbers, then it's a keeper, and I and I go through, I go through on the deal. If those are not the numbers, then I just kind of like pass up on the deal. Do you have a minimum as far as the value of the home? Like you want to get it for at least fifty thousand under its market value, or something like that. Yeah, so um, going back to like the, the formula is basically um, the value of the property, 
then I look for what can I cash this out for? Like right now I have a lender who gives me 75% loan to value. So I already know uh, value, multiply that by the 75%. L let's just say the number is, uh, is 200. So kind of I use 200 as my mark. All right, then I'll say, okay, now I have the 200,000 right here. Look at how much you, you know, I'm paying for the property. Let's just say it's, it's uh, there's 100. That's 100 spread. Mm -hmm. Now I look at right, how much it's gonna cost me to renovate. If it's gonna cost me 100 to renovate, and the cash out is kind of like 200, it's 200. It basically like there's no there's no uh, money in there basically so it's kind of like all right if it's 100 and i have to be like let's say 150 or even 175 so that once i'm done renovating i do the cash out i'm actually able to get my money back like the goal is not so much to make a profit on the cash out but just to at least get your money back so you can move on to the next one because if you do it correctly if let's say you have forty thousand thirty thousand dollars to buy a property you go out you buy a, a, a property you renovate it you rent it and then you cash it out if you can at least get back your 30,000 and it's like, let's say it's from, from, it'll take you six months to do that. Mm -hmm. So six months later, basically you got your 30, you know, you got your $30,000 back and do that again. So like, it's kind of like with that same money, every six months you could buy a property.